Are you feeling the pyromaniacal urge? Do you want to harness the power of fire for your benefit? Then fire farms might just be your thing. So, what is a fire farm? Fire farms are an incredibly powerful way to automate the killing of enemies and in turn, the production of resources. A fire farm is a way of killing an enemy via fire damage while also using a fling matic to keep the enemy frozen in place, save loot, and to keep the fire constantly spreading. When used correctly, it'll cause pigs and bunnymen to spawn, die, and then spawn again without having to wait for the usual 4 day timer for pigs and 1 day timer for bunnymen. There are also other uses for this farm design. To make a fire farm of your very own, you're going to need a few resources. Since I'll mainly be centering this farm around pigs and bunnymen, I'll start there. At the center of a tile, place down a pig house or a rabbit hutch. It just depends on what resources you're aiming to farm. In my case, I'll place down both because more resources never hurt. You're now going to need something for the fire to burn repeatedly. Hay walls are an awesome item to use for this since they're low cost and high density. You'll be able to fill up every square of the fire farm with hay walls very easily. Fill in an area about as large as what you see here. You could always make the farm bigger or smaller, but you'll need to keep in mind that Flingomatics will need to cover every inch of your farm. So now that I've filled in an area around the pig house and bunny hutch, we will want to make sure that the pig and bunny men do not have an easy way to escape. You want them confined to the farm for this to work efficiently. Use stone walls because they're low cost and they're not going to catch on fire. Wall the area around the hay walls off, leaving an entrance for you to access the loot that will drop later. Your farm should look something similar to this before moving on to the next part, Ice Flingomatics. The Flingomatics are going to play a crucial role in this farm's design. By placing Flingomatics in the corner of your farm, you'll be sure in the fact that there is enough coverage. Not one piece of hay wall will be unprotected, meaning no walls will actually burn and turn into ash. They'll burn for a little while, be extinguished, and then be reignited. This will keep the fire going indefinitely or until you turn on another Flingomatic. Now that you're ready to go, turn on the two corner flingomatics because more will likely cause the fire to be completely extinguished and then ignite the hay walls. The fire will spread causing rapid damage sticks to the pigs and bunnymen and before the walls can burn, the flingomatics will extinguish them. This will then repeat itself while killing pigs and bunnymen until you decide to turn on additional flingomatics. Four or more flingomatics will be needed to extinguish the fire in this farm's design. You can see that I put down an additional one just to speed up how quickly the farm is extinguished. When the farm is no longer running, you're free to claim your loot. An incredibly important note, do not stand in the fire when the farm is active. Unless you are willow and immune to fire damage, it will kill you. You can wear scale mail or obsidian armor if you wish to enter the burning farm as a different character. Now that you have an understanding of the mechanics behind a fire farm, there are other implementations that can benefit you. If you don't have shipwreck installed and want a method of farming birds and butterflies without elephant cactus, then you could use a fire farm instead. Place a bunch of flowers in an area similar to the pig and bunnyman farm and drop some seeds so you can control where the birds land. Walls will also be a big help in keeping the fire spreading. Turn on the flingomatics and light the flowers. Butterflies will spawn and die, giving you butterfly wings and butter drops, while birds will land and die providing you with feathers and morsels. Wearing a bird hat will of course speed up the rate you acquire birds, so if that's something you're after, it's always an option. You can use open versions of this farm, those without stone walls, to kill certain enemies as well, assuming you've got things set up. For example, you could start a fire farm up and walk Moose Goose into it. Moosey will freeze and take rapid damage, allowing you to collect the loot without much of a fight. Essentially, any mob that doesn't break structures or has freezing immunity could easily fall victim to a fire farm. There are many possibilities here. I'd like to point out that this mechanic does not work with merms. Even with the proper setup, merms are unfortunately not something you'll be able to farm up this way. The same goes for spider dens. Spider dens are an entity with a health value and will merely die after a certain amount of damage is sustained. Spin monkeys and primates are no different. This will work to kill the enemies, but it will have no bearing on their spawn rates. Hopefully now you all understand some of the basics of a fire farm and maybe even have some ideas as to how you'd like to implement one of your very own. There are many ways you can use the basics of a fire farm to your advantage. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned a little something. If you took a moment to like the video, I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to offer some feedback and tell me what tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.